Jeff Townsend in your class? No. He's the one speaking at the wedding. Oh. Okay, timers in your mark. Pardon? When I blow the whistle, start timing. Okay. I already started it. Well, you can record that. Am I on TV? You are. Thank you. 
there's today's date on a newspaper. Friday, October 12th.
have the balloons, could you please, someone in the group, take the very important task of, thank you, Amanda Taylor, of holding on to the balloons. All right. It'll help a lot, and I know it's hard for you guys at the back. It'll help a lot if you guys can keep the balloons still for the next few minutes. All right. Thanks very much for your great participation during that experiment. How many people saw the balloons move inward? Thank you. You can put your hands down. And how many predicted that that would happen? All right. So we had a few surprises. I'm going to briefly go over some of the physics with you um, to explain what happened there. And there's this wonderful world that you'll, word that you'll have probably heard once or twice before, but you'll hear it when you get into senior science. It's equilibrium. And all that means is that things are equal. And today what we're talking about is the pressure all around that balloon is either equal when it's in equilibrium or it's not. So up here on this post, first poster, this is a balloon before we blew in between them, and they're in equilibrium. So what I need a little bit of help with in just a second is I'm going to invite certain people to come up and put these blue arrows that are all the same size around those two balloons going inwards. So it's going to be like this. This is going to take probably a minute. So grade nines, where are you? Don't move yet. Grade nines. Okay. Grade 9 in groups 1, 4, 6, 7, 10, and 12. Can you come on up, please? Grade 9's in those groups. And these guys are going to grab a blue arrow, a big one, with tape on it, and put them on that first poster spread all the way around. Just the big arrows. Just the big arrows. We're going to get ten big arrows on there. Spread all the way around. Jacob, go where you got this. Big blue arrow. Okay. I think they're already gone. Okay. If you don't have a blue arrow, you can go and sit down. Thank you very much. Wesley, I'm going to need you to do one right at the top. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, great night. So in order to show equilibrium, all we're saying is that the forces are all the way the same, all the way around the balloon. But when you blew on that, you changed that because you created this wind in between and you pushed all the air out. So we just get little amounts of air pressure in here. So these arrows that are still on the outside, push those balloons in. So having a higher pressure on the outside and low on the inside because you move that air out, that creates a change in the pressure and we're not in equilibrium anymore. Have you ever been in a room with a window open and all of a sudden the door closed? Same thing. So equilibrium, not equilibrium, and we're going to use those same principles in the next experiment, which is going to, I think, be more surprising for you than what you saw with the balloons. Um, Ms. Rosswell, would you like to come back up to explain the second experiment? And again, I know those balloons are good, but if you could just keep them still. Okay, thanks, Ms. Ryan, and I think you probably have a better idea now of what happened with your balloons. This second experiment, we're going to see if we can make water move. So you're going to need a cup with about three quarters water in it, and you all have a straw. You need to cut your straw in about a 40-60 ratio. So 40% of the straw is one length, and 60% of the straw is another length. You can do a little math to figure that out. Sure. Math, math students. And what you'll do is put the shorter end of the straw in the water, not touching the bottom of the cup, because you want to have water flow. With the longer length of the straw, you'll set it perpendicular to the short length 
of the straw. Make them touch a little. You're going to blow into the longer length of the straw and see if you can get the water to come up out of the straw. So write down a prediction. What do you think you're going to have to do to make the water come up out of the straw? And then give it a try. Write your observations down.
close to the <laughs> Good times this weekend. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please make sure that your, especially the senior students, please make sure that the lab sheets are complete. Uh, I'm going to thank you very much, but I'm turning this back off, back over to Ms. Ross All right, so to meet the Guinness World Record, there's a few things you need to take care of. This was a science lesson, and in our science experiments, we always write a conclusion, right? So on your lab page, on the second page, is a spot for you and your group to write a conclusion about what you have learned about this principle. This principle is called the Bernoulli Principle. Anybody want to try spelling that? Bernoulli? Mr. Kuyper. Right, and that's very good, Mr. Kuyper. And that's what Ms. Ms. Ryan has been teaching you about here, and you've proven this principle through your two experiments. So what I'd like you to do in your group is have a quick discussion, and then the reporter will write down a conclusion about what you've learned, about what happens to air in these situations. So remember it's called the Bernoulli principle, or the Bernoulli effect. This is the principle in science that allows airplanes to fly, helicopters to hover, birds to fly. Is a very important principle to technologists and so So let's get that done. Once you have your conclusion written, each member that participated needs to print their name and sign their name. That's most important. We're going to be counting the number of participants by counting your signatures. And this is what will go to the Guinness World Record Committee in London, England.
not sign the per participation form, you have not signed yet. Put your hand up. Is there an idea how much more time we need? You have not signed? Yes, get that done, please. If you are done signing the permission form, you can dump your little water cup back into the larger water vessels. And can I get somebody from each group, maybe the team leader, to deliver their signed permission form to one of the stewards or a witness? Just one person needs to get up. Everybody else can stay seated. Thirty-four, thirty-three. Thirty-four. We had to be thirty minutes, so that's excellent. All right, we need a picture of everybody against that wall down there. 